Well, I'm now joined by the former U.S. Under Secretary of State for Economic Growth under the Trump administration, Keith Crook. Thank you very much indeed for your time on Sky News this morning. So as we heard there and also see Biden there visibly angry and emotional too following those attacks and he's vowed revenge. What does that look like? Where will his administration begin to target? Well, uh, Vanessa, thank you. Thank you for having me on on this really tragic uh, day. My heart goes out to the heroes that were fighting for freedom. And my prayers are are with their families and uh, the civilians, the allies, the, our, our Marines, um, and we'll never be able to pay uh, that sacrifice they made uh, for freedom. Uh, you know, I've been talking to intelligence officials all day today, and uh, my message was clear. We need, we leave no one behind. And when I mean no one, I, I, I mean Americans, I mean our allies. Uh, the UK has been great, the Brits, um, and our Afghan friends. Um, and we certainly have the capacity to do that. So um, let's look back to how all of this actually um, started. Obviously, a lot of people looking at the way that um, Biden has handled this. Many people do not disagree with the fact that troops have to come out, but they're looking at the nature in which he handled this. What do you make of the way that um, Biden has handled this so far? Yeah, well, Vanessa, um, I, I was responsible. I, I led... Uh, U.S. efforts uh, for repatriation of 100,000 citizens uh, during COVID. At, at that point, that was the biggest repatriation in history. And, and we were very closely with the Department of Defense uh, and obviously the State Department. And it was the ultimate private-public uh, partnership because at that time, uh, the airlines have canceled most flights. And I can tell you, that when our people are in power, they have the ability to get the job done. And I think you heard from President Biden the resolve in his message that we will leave absolutely no one behind, and we will uh, we will uh, punish uh, these authoritarian regimes. And you served under the Trump administration. Let's look at Donald Trump's involvement in this. He signed that deal in Doha in February 2020, committing to the withdrawal of U.S. and allied troops from Afghanistan. Biden actually delayed that move, didn't he? Because um, Trump was actually looking at May of this year. Well, I, you know, I think that the most important thing here was no one ever trusted uh, the Taliban, and they had responsibility for the safety uh, of American citizens, of our allies, of our Afghan uh, friends, those who uh, were coming out. Now, for whatever happened, uh, they did not live up to that. That is why that date has been thrown out the window now. And, you know, it's a really uh, important thing that we do not lose the trust of our allies, our friends, and everybody that's been at this for so long. And it has implications for, you know, the, the, the big picture with regard to, for example, China's authoritarian threat to our freedom and a democracy. And what does this latest attack mean for Afghanistan? Do you fear that it could become a haven for terrorists once again? Well, I think that's the point, is that we've got to make sure that that it does not. And uh, that's where it all comes down to working with our uh, allies to have that resolve um, and to be and to be tough. We've got the military might to do it. Uh, we've got the diplomatic uh, skills to do it. We've got the allies to do it. And we've got to make sure that uh, it does not harbor terrorists. And, you know, the, the borders are porous. And, and, uh, and so there's opportunities in other places in the world. But we've got to protect 
global uh, security around the world. So how do you do that then? Are you suggesting then that um, troops stay in Afghanistan much longer then? Well, I, I, you know, I think that's for the for the military commanders. But I think we've got some very serious leverage points with the Taliban. Um, first of all, they need uh, they need money, and uh, they're expecting a lot of money from the World Bank, from IMF, uh, and that can be cut off in an instant. The other thing they want is they want international recognition. Uh, that's important uh, to them, and as long as these things are going on, there will be no. Uh, international recognition. Uh, you know, they also need help running their airports, uh, particularly uh, Kabul, because they they need to be able to uh, have uh, travel with the outside world. So we've got some leverage points, some certainly some military ones, but also some ep- economic and and diplomatic ones. And you know, uh, a big question is. Uh, is China because they're after their min- minerals. Afghanistan is that me- missing piece of that jigsaw puzzle for China's one belt, one road. So uh, that's a major factor.